Okay, hello everybody. Uh, you've already heard a bit from me, um, but as John mentioned, I'm the co-investigator on the Heritage Connector project. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about the aims of the project and some of the preliminary findings of the literature review that we've been doing. And I should stress that the project is not specifically concerned with Wikidata. That's one aspect of, of what we're looking at, but it's not the sole or main focus of the project. So again, as John mentioned at the beginning of this session, uh, this project is funded, it's one of eight foundation projects which have been funded by the Towards a National Collection programme in the UK, which is supported by the Arts and Humanities Research Council to open up um, uh, UK cultural heritage to the rest of the world. Uh, the project team consists of uh, John leading at the Science Museum with Kalyan Dutchia, Jamie Unwin, um, and at the v &A, Angela Wolfe and Richard Palmer, and at the University of London, there's myself and Rhiannon Lewis, who um, has been doing a wonderful job in organising what we're doing here today. So, um, one of the main aims of the project is to establish how existing digital tools and methods can be used to build relationships at scale between digitized, digitized collections and other content sources. And you've been hearing about a lot of that work today. But we're concerned with other things, for example, how might confidence in the quality of those relationships have an effect on usefulness in research and discovery and people's attitudes towards the value of that kind of linked data work for cultural heritage. What and where is the best use of human input in these processes? What skills are required and who can contribute to them? Where is curatorial effort best invested, for example, as against um, crowdsourcing and co-creation? Something which has come up a bit in the questions that we've had today, what are the gaps and biases that emerge when these relationships are established? By linking data that's already very well described, are we just reinforcing hierarchies in the collections and not actually revealing new um, information? But are there unexpected connections as well that can come out of this kind of work? And how might these new automatically established relationships help museums to gain greater understanding of how their collections are being used and interpreted now and how they might be used and interpreted in the future? So the project activities, we only began in February and as you all know, there's been uh, some rather significant uh, life changing events since then. So it's been, uh, been interesting getting a research project off the ground in the current climate, but uh, we've been able to uh, do ongoing work with a review of relevant literature and tools and a lot of experimentation with Jamie and Callion to experiment with digital tools and computational methods to create speculative identifications between different records. And we're starting off with a test data set from the Science Museum group, exploring named entity recognition, named entity link linkage, machine learning for classifying and clustering, and so on. But the aim is not to just work with the Science Museum Group's own collections, but to work on successively larger and more varied data sets over the course of the project. And the first step to that will be integrating data from the V&A catalogues as well. And the main aim is to develop an open source heritage connector prototype. And I must stress it is very much only a prototype sorry about that, uh, capable of holding a web of links between object records and knowledge graphs such as Wikidata. The literature review is the piece of work that I've been involved with and I should say that it is only at a very initial stage so everything is hedged about with caveats um, that we will refine uh, and add and remove some, uh, some of the findings that we have here. One of the main outputs of the project is going to be an open Zotero library which currently lists 104 items ranging from academic articles to blog posts and conference presentations. We want to be as comprehensive as we can and not stick solely to academic research for example. Uh, the link is there and I'll share it again at the end of this presentation and uh, we are trying to distill the common themes, challenges and opportunities. That was one of the reasons for asking most of our speakers here today to finish by talking about the challenges and opportunities of the work that they're doing. And as I said, this is very much an ongoing process. So all suggestions for areas of research, literature that you found particularly valuable, presentations, anything that you would like to send our way, we'll make sure that they're added to the library so that other people can benefit from it. 
So the, the findings so far, um, motivations for working with linked open data include a concern to make cultural heritage more visible, and that links very explicitly onto the themes of the Towards a National Collection programme, which is about opening up cultural heritage. There's an interest in exposing hidden collections or hidden aspects of relatively well-known collections. And um, that goes back to these hierarchies in the data. Are there aspects of these collections that are not available because they haven't been described previously? And are there collections that are really, even within uh, institutions' own collections, relatively um, difficult to get to? We've heard about round tripping and the enrichment of catalogues and metadata. And it's this awareness that there is a huge amount of information available in sources like Wikidata that could be used to help enrich catalogues in cultural heritage institutions. And we've also seen again, wonderful examples of data reuse in new contexts. That there are people out there who will do amazing things with your data that would never have occurred to you and linking collections together and licensing them openly I would say as well helps to do that. There's also a desire to create a better user experience and I, I like this way of describing it which empowers patrons to draw their own conclusion about cultural heritage artifacts opening up different routes into the data for people to learn in their own way. And practically, the challenges of dealing with ever-growing volumes of data at a time when resources are increasingly scarce, and that's not something that's going to change anytime soon. Uh, in the literature that we've read so far, there's a generally shared vision of multiple institutions collaborating to merge their data together in order to create new research paths for their users. And again, we've seen some examples of that today. But many projects involve only one or at most two institutions and with some obvious exceptions, international collaboration is relatively rare and that's partly about the scale of some of the experimentation. Cultural heritage databases are rich, large and complex and there's limited standardisation. One study found as many as 20 vocabularies and ontologies in use. And institutional histories and cultures can make standardization challenging. So it's a truism, but it's not just a technical problem. And barriers to linked open data in the cultural heritage sector fall under three broad headings, technical, conceptual and legal, to which I would certainly add financial. And I don't have to tell most of you, but this is time consuming and resource intensive work. Uh, to quote, uh, the range of data preparation tasks is open ended and ad hoc. There isn't really an end point. There's always more that can be done. A lot of linked open data work to date has focused on people rather than objects and on linkage with resources like DBpedia and Viaf. Although, again, we saw examples where that's not the case. It's not a question of if human intervention and curation is needed, we can't do all of this algorithmically, but at what point in the pipeline is that human intervention best targeted? What are the most useful human contributions and how does this vary across potential contributing groups? What part does co-creation have to play? And the gamification that we saw from, saw from Shani at the beginning and being imaginative and experimental around ways to engage people outside cultural heritage. Many linked open data projects envisage personalization as a very important outcome and that's something that's often foregrounded at the start, but this remains a mid to long term goal and is much harder to achieve in practice. Finally, quality, authority and trust are crucial for cultural heritage organisations, but this can hold back experimentation and present a challenge for scalability. This quote from Fauconnier, in order to help assessment of data quality, it is important to explicitly indicate that a certain edit was informed by an algorithm, but it is also very valuable to be able to trace specific edits back to specific trusted or less trusted users. So that knowledge of data provenance is really important in this context. And there have been numerous promising experiments, so much fascinating research to read about, which have produced results suggestive for the sector as a whole. But to date, it's been very rare for these to move beyond the prototype stage. 
So thank you very much. That's the Heritage Connector project. Um, and there's a website on the Science Museum Group site. Uh, the Zotero library link is there. And also, if you'd like more information about the Towards the National Collection programme, there's a URL for that too. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Jane. So I'll just field a couple of questions over to you from the chat. So one of the questions is, um, is there a review of literature and tools available for sharing? Uh, not yet. It absolutely will be. It's going to be one of the key outputs of the project, um, but we haven't got anywhere nearly far enough into it to share that yet. Um, but I hope that the library will give you some idea of our thinking and the areas and things that we've identified as important so far. But yes, it very much will be um, open access and available to everybody. Um... There's a quick question about um, all the links that have appeared in the various presentations. Yes, we will definitely draw those together somehow and post, post them all out for everybody. I can post them into the chat today as well for my presentation, certainly the ones from that final slide. So another question is around this work in the context of uh, digital humanities more broadly. So are the, are the, the kind of the concerns that we're talking about today and the opportunities um, do they feel sort of central to the evolution of digital humanities? Um, and this question of human contribution and human labour and where best to place that, mm -hmm. is this, are these the kinds of questions that also come up in other approaches? Um, yes, and certainly I think that this work is increasingly um, important for digital humanities, actually. And you hear people talking much less about digital humanities per se and widening the definitions to include digital cultural heritage and digital culture and much more a very, very welcome focus, I think, on uh, objects and moving image and sound and all of the things that museums for example deal with and not just so much focus on text although of course that is still really interesting and important and one of the um, aims I think of the Towards a National Collection program is to really um, build in those connections between uh, digital humanities researchers in universities and the work the amazing work that's going on uh, within the cultural heritage sector and formalize that so that um, we aren't running in parallel parallel but we are working together to solve some of these problems and on the um, human contributions absolutely that's something that gets discussed in every pretty much every digital humanities project I've ever been involved with um, it's been wonderful that the dialogue around that has changed much and moved away from crowdsourcing and getting people to do work for a research project and it's much more around co-creation and um, co-creation of knowledge and shared ownership and acknowledging contributions effectively and that they're very live and exciting discussions going on around that in digital humanities as well. Excellent, thank you very much Jane. So our next speaker is um, James Morley who's a digital practitioner and cultural data hacker. Over to you James. <laughs> 